Hi YouTube, sorry about the unusual platform we're working in today. Uh, my name's Sean Connors, this is Outsiders. This is a direct um, reply actually to Ginger Spy, uh, Ginger Spy, sorry, um, who yesterday I come across his channel, he's uh, been uh, very, very, seems like a really experienced DM, uh, clearly hasn't played for a little while, got a lot of wealth of knowledge there, he's only produced a couple of videos, um, I'd check out his channel if I was you. But this is really for Ginger Spice, really a reply to you. So um, first of all, f first off, thank you very much for your comments and um, welcome aboard our little community. We'd welcome any videos that you as an experienced DM would put out. But to answer your question, you asked, um, what system should I play next? What, what would be a good idea to try and encourage, really? What, what would be a good route to go? So I think, um, if I'm being honest, from the things that you suggested... Um, yeah, monetary issues can be a problem, so that really does rule out Warhammer 3rd Edition. Um, I know we've said that Warhammer is cheap, but it's cheap in the scope of things in the longer term. If money's tight at the beginning, it's quite an investment because you're going to have to spend close on 200 quid. And I don't think a lot of people can do that straight away. And I think it is worth spending that money, but to be honest, at this stage, I'd probably go in another direction in your case. Um, uh, you know, get, get back into the swing of it, get a group hunt, get a new group formed around you and go from there. So I think Pathfinder is probably your best route to go down, if I'm being honest. Um, you've clearly played um, some D20 stuff because you've mentioned, I think, a more modern version of D20, or I think it might have been World of Darkness D20, but you've certainly mentioned it. So therefore, you've got a good understanding of the core mechanic of, of D20. Pathfinder pretty much runs off that system. Um, I have a few personal issues with Pathfinder. They're personal to me. It's what I've found so far. But as a system, because it's modelled off 3rd edition 3.5, it's a very tight set of rules. And as a, a DM getting a group back together, the advantage is going to be pretty simple. A lot of players will like Pathfinder and will want to be involved in a campaign. So immediately you're opening up your chances to get a few players around you, because that's the key. Get players around you first, then you can deviate into other systems later. Pathfinder will allow you to do that. And also if you get a good group of people around you, who knows? Maybe they want to, might want to run in a, a game like Warhammer 3rd and prepare to split cost. It does happen. I mean, there's certainly good people out there. So I'd go Pathfinder. Now my reservations, just so you know them, and I think it's important to give it, would be... Um, that the system, although a very tight set of rules, each edition from 3rd to 3.5 to Pathfinder, um, and they are very much a likeness, each time they've, they've changed the rules slightly, and they are slight changes, it's upped the player's power straight away, and it's really significant. And equally, the weaknesses, I think, are also becoming more and more in my view, clearer. So I'm going to touch on it here, but I want to recap, I want to do a review really, a proper review of Pathfinder now. I've had close on a year of, of very heavy role playing into it to give my feedback so far as a DM. Don't get me wrong, anybody that's out there, I like Pathfinder, I think it's a great system. It's modelled off one of my favourite systems. I'm going to enjoy it. But there are a few things that really annoy me. And um, those are a few things I'm going to cover off for you now. So first one is there's a definite power upgrade for all characters. Now, what the problem with that is, is that the challenge ratings that are supposed to exist within the, the beasteries don't quite match. They don't match up very well beyond about 8th level. There's a period of time, I think, between about 8th and about 12th, where a lot of the challenge ratings seem skew if and the players are able to walk it. And it's normally the combats are over fairly quickly. Now, I run a tight ship, and I think my combats have always run really quick, no matter what edition of D&D it's been. Um... But I would say it really comes down to pretty much one or two rounds at those levels, and then the combat's won or lost. And primarily, most of the time, it's won by the players. A good group of players who are well organised, who understand the rules, are going to absolutely create some monsters of some characters. Now, I'll give you an example of how power hungry that system can be. And this is just one example of things I've seen. And this is something I developed. It's not something a player's challenged me with yet, but it will come, no doubt about it. So, very quickly, this is it. You could, in Pathfinder, in theory, play a first-level sorcerer who's got the bloodline of a fae. The special party trick of fae is they add plus two to the difficulty level of... Um, of um, I, oh, I can't think of the word. That's gone right out of my head. Um, it's not illusions. It's going to have to come back to me. It. Damn it. I hate I hate messing up on things, but this is a personal video. Compulsion. Anyway, well, sorry about that. I do apologise. Um, 
but yeah, so so basically what you could do is you could, because of the way point buy works in Pathfinder, and that's pretty much the system most people will use, um, because of the way it works, you could have characters that are built this way. So you can have a 20 intelligence straight away. Um, you could have, so that means that your first level spells are difficulty 11, plus 5 for the stat, which makes 16. You could take two feats playing human, which is spell focus and greater spell focus, which puts plus 2 on the difficulty chart. So that takes it from being 16 now to 18. Add two for compulsion spells because you're playing a Fey. And your first level saving throws against will, because that's what most compulsions run off, and they are some really cracking spells throughout the levels, 20 straight away, 20 difficulty save. Save or suck. And it is a killer. It's an absolute killer. And it, it is a game changer in my view. So Pathfinder has some issues. My way to get around that would simply be go back old school. You know, roll up characters. Um, I was really against rolling up till recently, and I've now I've seen more and more of Pathfinder where Direct Direction 3.5 was going. I now think you just got to because you can't have all these stereotypical clones. It's got to mean something. So I would say that. But anyway, that's the story for another time. Bottom line, recap for you: Pathfinder, in my view, would be the way for you to go. I think there's a lot in it that you'll enjoy. It's a really tight ship of rules. There's not a lot of grey areas. It's a very very tactical game, which. You either love it or you hate it. I like both camps. You know, I don't mind if it's not so tactical and I don't mind if it is tactical. I think both camps are equally have their merits. But you have players that like either or or, or both. So it is very, very good. Um, it's high fantasy Pathfinder, so you've got to enjoy your high fantasy type games. But overall, it's an absolute humdinger. It really is good. So um, that's probably the direction that I would go. We do appreciate, thank you very much by the way for sending in your video, I do appreciate you answering my DMs Tips program and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the videos that you actually produce for us, which is going to be really cool and I'd like you to keep in touch personally and if there's anything I can do to help, feel free to ask and I will always answer your questions. Anyway, this has been Outsiders, I'm Sean Connors, Till the next time, take care of yourselves.